service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That word doctrine means learning or for teaching or for explanation. The scripture is given to us for learning, for teaching, for explanation. And explanation and teaching involves reproof, it involves correction, and it involves instruction in righteousness. The scriptures are given to us for that purpose, to explain these, these issues of reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Verse 15 explains to us a little more of what the scriptures are given to us for. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. That's very important. Take note of those three words. I mean those two words. In Christ Jesus. So we say that the essence of Bible study what we are looking for in Bible study is what Jesus said in John 5, 39. Search the scriptures, investigate the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they, the scriptures, are they which testify of me. All the scriptures give evidence to my person that the entire framework and configuration of the scriptures is to give witness or testimony or evidence to the person of jesus so the whole of the scriptures speak about a person not about things they testify of me that they are they in the greek is the word p-u-n pun it means they individually are they collectively which testify of me that the scriptures individually and collectively put together have one message jesus they testify of me in luke chapter 24 verse 44 after his resurrection on the way to emmaus he met this man and he spent quality time to share with them about what the scriptures are about and in verse 44 he said to them these are the words which i spoke unto you while i was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me so the entire framework of the scriptures is concerning jesus it is a testimony or an evidence to a person the scriptures are an evidence to a person yesterday i said that you cannot use the scriptures to teach biology you cannot use the scriptures to teach um, uh, business because the scriptures have a definite assignment they testify of jesus the scriptures speak concerning him whether in the law of moses in the prophets or in the psalms it is all about jesus it's not about things or about business or about occupation the scriptures are a testimony or an evidence of jesus can i hear your amen all right in the next verse then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures you know after this seminar 40 days conference jesus had with the disciples who now became the apostles when they began to preach in the book of acts of the apostles beginning from acts chapter 2 when peter gave his first sermon it was jesus acts chapter 3 it was jesus acts chapter 5 it was jesus acts chapter 6 and 7 when stephen brought his defense the message was jesus acts chapter 8 when philip went to samaria the message was jesus we took time to go through all the details in acts chapter 10 when peter went to the house of cornelius the message was jesus and then we began to talk about the fact that paul the apostle also preached in the same light but paul went a bit further than where peter stephen philip stopped and that's what we're going to examine tonight beginning from right now now please turn your bibles to the book of acts chapter 11. now please it's important for you to know that all believers are supposed to say the same thing because once we understand the scriptures properly all over the world believers will be saying the same thing the reason why believers are not saying the same thing is because the understanding of the scripture is not thorough 
and like i said previously i said if your interpretation of the bible is wrong your application will be wrong or your practice will be wrong so it is from the interpretation of scripture that is where there's a lot of fallacy and a lot of heresy in the body of christ jesus himself speaking said you do err because you know not the scripture nor the power of god so when there is inadequate knowledge of the scripture there is bound to be heresy and error and of course you know <laughs> That's the praise is where the problem is when there's imitation 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 you cannot tell the difference the difference only is noticed when the original shows up the moment the original shows up all the imitation will, will be obvious that's the problem with the body of christ when the original message of jesus begins to be preached like we're preaching it now it will look like but are you saying everybody is wrong you are the only one that is right because when there's imitation everywhere once the original shows you can tell the difference but if everything is imitation all of them are the same that's the problem the interpretation of scripture and that is very important for the body of christ in these last days because it will take a clear message of the scriptures to bring the glory of the latter house in manifestation somebody shout i hear you very important so let's let's get into this thing properly and and enjoy the word of god tonight the scriptures don't have dual message we don't have two messages we have only one message jesus all right so what did paul say differently from what um peter and the rest said now take note peter the last sermon peter gave us in acts chapter 10 in chapter 12 peter was in prison and herod died in chapter 13 um they were preaching jesus in chapter 15 the next time you see peter talking he was defending paul in chapter 15 the next time peter was talking it was in defense of paul so what did paul say that others didn't say acts chapter 13 verse 32 and we declare unto you glad tidings out that the promise which was made unto the fathers now paul begins his own submission and his own message and his own defense of the gospel of christ from where peter also started verse 33 god had fulfilled the same unto us their children in that he had raised up jesus again as it is also written in the second psalm thou art my son this day have i begotten thee and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead so even the the defense the message of paul was about the death the burial and the resurrection of christ which is what all the other apostles that was their message they didn't have anything outside of christ look at paul preaching now the first time paul is preaching it is jesus he's talking about his death his burial and his resurrection and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead now no more to return to corruption he said on this wise i will give you the sure mercies of david wherefore he saith also in another psalm and their messages were references to the psalms because jesus said that all things must be fulfilled which we have spoken concerning me in the law in the prophet and in the psalm so now their messages because jesus told them that the scripture was concerning him made reference specifically to one of the areas one of the books or one of the prophets jesus talked about which is the psalms and that's why paul is busy making reference to the psalms here look at it he says wherefore he said also in another psalm thou shalt not suffer the holy one to see corruption look at verse 36 for david after he had served his own generation by the will of god fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption but jesus didn't see corruption but david saw corruption so corruption is not dead because jesus died and yet even though he died he didn't see corruption so when he's talking of corruption he's not making reference to death we will deal with that maybe tomorrow or next week but keep it somewhere around your mind but david died and he saw corruption but jesus died and never saw corruption because it was prophesied of him that you shall not allow the holy one see corruption and the scriptures must be fulfilled i'm teaching here all right 
we'll deal with that a bit later i just wanted you to take note of that while we proceed the next verse 37 but he whom god raised up saw no corruption verse 38 be known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins forgiveness of sins i've taught you that it's not a response to prayer the message of christ is the message of forgiveness forgiveness is not prayed forgiveness is preached the gospel is not come and repent the gospel is your sins are forgiven look at it he said that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins that is the message preached that's why when you receive that message you are born again the message gets you born again because the message is the forgiveness of sins you can hear the message and be asking for forgiveness the hearing of the message and the accepting of the message is the accepting of forgiveness the message of christ is the accepting of forgiveness forgiveness of sins next verse uh, i love this is what paul added this is what paul added that peter did not have the the the, the strength to say this is what philip could not say this is what stephen did not say in his defense in chapter 6 and 7 paul now is going a step further than the apostles and by him all that believe are justified from some things all things from which you could not be justified by the law of moses now paul ups the game he takes it to another level before paul showed up everybody was preaching and telling the people of how jesus died and sins are forgiven when paul showed up paul said look it is not just your sins are forgiven even the things that the law of moses condemn you from this message justifies you from now he upturns the law now nobody could do that no none of those jews could do that not even peter why because peter didn't even know it peter didn't know it none of those apostles knew what paul knew so Paul now came up, he moved the entire ministry to the next level. Somebody shout, I hear you. Yeah. He moved it to the next level. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So now, it now informs you, listen carefully, that the book of Acts is a book of discoveries. That means, listen carefully, I had Kenneth E. Hagin say this years ago. I didn't understand, but now I understand. He said, Acts of the Apostles was a baby church. It was a baby church. They were just growing. Those guys were not mighty men. They were baby Christians making discoveries as they went along. So, Acts of the Apostles is a compilation of the story of the growth of the church from infancy. And that's why as I begin to teach you, you begin to see some, so many things that, that, you know, Paul brought into the church that was not in the church by revelation. Because we're here to know who we are, what we have, and what we can do in Christ. So now, Paul the Apostle is bringing a new dimension to this message. He's talking about the law. He's trying to step in a territory where angels fear to tread all right i say all right all right now you ever observed that peter's concept of forgiveness changed as he preached the way he preached forgiveness in acts chapter 2 is different from the way he preached in acts chapter 5 and it's different from the way he preached in acts chapter 10 when you go home check check the different messages they differed the reason was because as peter preached forgiveness he increased in knowledge and grew spiritually and as his understanding grew, his emphasis changed. So the way he preached in Acts chapter 2, is not as a, the way he preached in Acts chapter 10. There's a clear difference even in that message. Because in chapter 10, his understanding of forgiveness has cleared very well. 
so when he presented forgiveness in chapter 10 it's different from the way he presented it in chapter 2 of us let's just go check it out you'll find it as you study the word of god somebody shout hallelujah so now let's get into paul's speech in acts chapter 19 because we're building something here acts chapter 19 is very critical to our study because paul now passed the upper coast and came to ephesus and found him some disciples in ephesus now the word disciple is not a spiritual word it's an english word when you hear disciple disciples of jesus it's not the, the word disciple doesn't make them special it's an english word just like we have the disciples of jesus the disciples of gamaliel they were just disciples adherents of something a disciple is an adherent of something a follower doesn't make them special so now paul finds certain disciples in ephesus in acts chapter 19 verse 2 and he said unto them have you received the holy ghost since you believed and they said unto him we have not so much as heard whether there be any holy ghost next verse and he said unto them unto what then were ye baptized and they said unto john's baptism <laughs> now let's do a background check because to understand this we have to go to the background so let's do a background check in acts chapter 18 because acts chapter 18 gives us a position that clarifies acts chapter 19 are you ready for this all right so let's do a background check on a young man that was called apollos in acts chapter 18 now first of all look at me for a minute everybody take note in chapter 19 of acts where we're going to be reading in a few minutes eight verses are dedicated to the baptism of john eight verses of acts chapter 19 number two john the baptist was a prophet number three john the baptist did not write a book there is no book of john the baptist all right follow me carefully number four john the baptist was only discussed in eight verses here in acts so in our background check let's get to apollos in acts 18 24 and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandra, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures. How was he in the scriptures? Mighty in the scriptures. Came to Ephesus. Alright? So this guy was mighty in scriptures. And he came to Ephesus. But let's see the level of his might in scriptures. Next verse. This man was instructed in the way of the lord and being fervent in the spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord knowing only the baptism of john again john didn't write a book <laughs> so with the might of apollos as eloquent and mighty in the scriptures all he knew was the baptism of john so what did he mean that apollos was mighty what it meant is apollos could memorize plenty of scriptures by heart when apollos stand the way scriptures will come out of his mouth is as if he's the one that wrote it but when he wants to explain it the only thing he can explain out of all the scriptures he's quoting is the baptism of john i don't know if i'm communicating at all that was the limit of apollos but it was mighty <laughs> oh jesus are you ready for study if you're ready say i'm ready okay so mighty in scriptures all right and if you saw there he, he said he thought the way of the lord twice this man was instructed in the way of the lord one and being fervent in the spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the lord two twice in one verse all right so this apollos was a believer number two he was speaking concerning jesus but his message of jesus was limited to the baptism of john so the question now is where is apollos quoting from because by this time apollos was preaching there was no new testament for him to quote and john didn't have a book So when we say his knowledge was limited to the baptism of john what are we talking about 
verse 26 and 27 again and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly who is aquila and priscilla aquila and priscilla were companions of paul so they were very very efficient in the revelation of apostle paul so when they heard apollos eloquently preaching the scriptures limited to the baptism of john they could see shady areas they could see loopholes in his teaching they say young man it's not like that follow us i prophesy over you light will shine upon your heart they took him with them that's why i told you all preaching is not the same that you hear a man preaching with eloquence doesn't mean his preaching is correct this guy was mighty this guy was eloquent uh -uh. what are you talking about and i'm going to show you the problem with apollo's preaching and i'm going to show you what aquila and priscilla did to, uh, to apollo's look at verse 27 and when he was disposed to pass on to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. They had believed through grace. So he took the scriptures to show them Jesus. But take note, he only knew the baptism of John. So what did Aquila and Priscilla do to Apollos? Verse 26, they expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly they expounded unto him the way of god more perfectly that word expounded more perfectly is a single word in greek it is akribos they expounded more perfectly it means akribos akribos you will see that word akribos in six places in the new testament the first time the word Acribos is implied is in Matthew 2 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem. This was Herod, Herod sending the wise men to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently. That word search diligently is the word Acribos. Search diligently. So Acribos means diligently. Search diligently for the young child. Luke 1 3 also has the application of the word acribos. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilos. Most excellent Theophilos. And in communicating to most excellent Theophilos, because Theophilos was a learned colleague, therefore, Luke, Dr. Luke, had to use acribos. To communicate to Theophilus. Perfect understanding. Another scripture. Acts 23 15. Now therefore ye with the counsel signify to the chief captain. That he bring down unto you tomorrow. As though you will inquire something more perfectly. Something more perfectly concerning him. And we or ever he come near are ready to kill him. More perfectly. More perfectly. Look at verse 20 of the same chapter. And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee, that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council, as though they will inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. Acribos. More perfectly. Another scripture is Acts 24, 22, where the word Acribos is used. And when Felix had these things, having more perfect knowledge, having more perfect knowledge acribos of that way he defied them and said and said when lysias the chief captain shall come down i will know the uttermost of your matter so that word acribos means more perfect knowledge another word for acribos is in ephesians 5 15. see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise the word circumspectly is the word Acribos, circumspectly. Another use of that word is in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You know perfectly. 
he didn't say the lord is a thief he said the day will come as as a thief in the night all right so he used the word acribos no perfectly no perfectly now the word acribos was used back then in the ancient greek greek history for the finest detail when the word acribos is used what it is telling you is to go for the finest detail or carry out a comprehensive study more perfectly pay attention to details don't just rush it on top take your time do a thorough study and investigation and come out with the finest details on the subject so when aquila and priscilla took apollos what they did to apollos is that they said look don't be preaching scattered scattered settle down honey you know they took apollos and made him a member of their church actually they took him into their church made him a member and told him start coming for bible study we need time to fine tune you because this thing you are preaching is not like that. So this boy became a member of the church of Aquila and Priscilla. Because Aquila and Priscilla were companions of Paul. And they had understanding of the new creation. The in Christ realities. Which is what we are dealing with here. But this guy, when he met more refined ministers. We are talking of refining now. Are you following me now? We are talking about refined. We are not talking about crude ministry. We are talking about refined ministry. It is called ministry of the New Testament. When Apollo saw refined ministers. Who were giving him details of what he was doting about nothing. He humbled himself. Not only humbled. He stopped preaching. Not only stopped preaching. He became a member of their church. And sat down. To be fine-tuned you know for example let me give, just give you a little illustration here for lack of thorough study of the word holiness many churches preach holiness in a very heretic manner heretic now do you realize that the first time the word holy was used it was used to identify a holy day a day was called holy a day a day was called holy the word holy was also used for animal holy animal so holiness doesn't mean sinlessness that's not the meaning it's quack study and interpretation of the bible that defines holiness as sinlessness it's lack of fine tuning i'm teaching now yeah do you know that vessels of ministry were called holy vessels vessels of ministry they were called holy in the bible israel with all their unbelievers with all their useless people they were called a holy nation god said they, they are a holy nation to me with all the sinners inside them look at acts 19 3 and he said unto them unto what then we are ye baptized and they said unto john's baptism now that verse 3 is talking about the act of baptism but look at verse 4 then said paul john verily follow carefully baptize with the baptism of repentance saying follow me carefully with the baptism of repentance saying so the baptism of john was not immersion it was a teaching it was a teaching of john that was called the baptism of john so when paul now is talking he said to them john verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying that is the baptism of repentance was not an act it was a teaching i don't know if you're following here saying 
unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on christ jesus it was a teaching it was not immersion so can we now say that what paul is explaining in acts chapter 19 verse 4 was what apollos was doing in acts 18 he was mighty in the scriptures and knew only the baptism of john teaching only the baptism of john that means what apollos was doing was the teaching and that teaching was called the baptism of john not an act are you with me here so now we're going to uncover what are the details in the baptism of john's teaching please listen carefully there is the practice of baptism that john did and there is the baptism of john called a teaching are you following verse 5 when they had this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus that is not water baptism that means when they had paul's teaching they were born again this baptism here is born again wipe your religious caps up and stop thinking of baptism as water that's what i'm teaching you when they had the teaching that paul brought to them on jesus they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus they were baptized that is they were born again in jesus name that means even though they were baptized with the baptism of john they were unbelievers that means they took them put inside the water according to john's uh, operation but they were not born again but when they had paul teaching they now had understanding that was when they got born again baptizing the name of the lord jesus means to be born again it doesn't mean to enter water just like the baptism of john is a teaching am i teaching if you're following shout i hear you just think with me look at the scriptures you will understand very clearly as we go now did john let me just ask you some questions so we think together did john confirm that jesus was the christ huh did he confirm that number two did john say before he saw jesus that jesus was the messiah that will come to israel huh did he say that number three what was john saying before jesus came the voice of one crying where and what was the message prepare ye that was what john was preaching john was preaching about the coming messiah that was his message that message is called the baptism of john matthew 3 11. i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than i whose shoes i'm not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire question holy ghost baptism is he soaking somebody in water but it is called baptism so not every baptism is inside the water not every baptism is inside the water he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and fire he said my own is water his own he won't take you to river he won't take you to river my own i will teach it and i will baptize in water but when he comes he will not take you to river his own is the holy ghost how are you born again you are born again by being baptized in the spirit what is baptism in the spirit is born again john chapter 4 it shall be in him a well springing up to everlasting life 
let me ask you a very simple question before i get into a few more details when somebody gets born again does he have the holy spirit huh wait answer well don't be afraid if you miss it i'll correct you so everybody born again has the holy spirit so why do they need to be baptized with the holy spirit Everybody born again, does he have the Holy Spirit? Huh? Huh? Okay, the house has divided now. Very good. Everybody born again, do they have the Holy Spirit? Huh? They don't have. If you are for, they don't have, wave your hand. <laughs> they don't have the Holy Spirit, wave your hand. Very good. Put it down. They have the Holy Spirit, wave your hand. Very good, put it down. Who born them again? Eh? Who born them again? That which is born of flesh? That which is born of spirit? How did they get born again? Of the Holy Spirit. So if they are born of the Holy Spirit, where are they? They are in the spirit. So if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. What born you again is the spirit of Christ. And the spirit of Christ is the Holy Ghost. So every born again child of God has the Holy Spirit in him. Rising like a well. Keep that there. Because we shall open the born as full time there in the course of this. Just keep it somewhere. So John the Baptist was the first person who talked about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He was the first person in the New Testament. But remember, he preached Christ. Okay? So when we say he knew only the baptism of John, what we are saying is he knew only the message of John. What is the message of John? In order for us to understand the message of John very clearly, I want you to look at John 1.29. The next day, John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That was John's message. What was the issue of Apollos? He knew only the baptism of John. What was the baptism of John? The preaching of Christ. What did John preach? That Christ will take away sin. That Christ will take away sin. Behold the Lamb of God. That was the baptism of John. So what was Apollos preaching? Apollos was preaching that Jesus was going to take away sin. That was all Apollos knew. The only thing Apollos knew when Apollos will preach and quote all the scripture, the only thing he will say is that Jesus will take away sin. That's all he was preaching. So Aquila and Priscilla said, you have to preach beyond that. There are other details around that. Don't just be preaching that. That doesn't make you, uh, uh, it doesn't make you a balanced minister of the gospel. He didn't have the finest details. And these people had to take him and fine tune his message. And his message had to be properly fine-tuned by this gentleman. Somebody shout, I hear you. Look at Judas' account, the qualification for somebody that was to replace Judas, so that you see the use of that word. Acts 1.21 Wherefore of these men, which have accompanied with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. That's the qualification of the man that will replace Judas after the death of Judas. Next verse. Beginning from the baptism of John, on to that same day that he was taken off from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection what they were saying is that the only person that can replace judas iscariot after his death will be somebody that was there to hear the teaching of john and witness the baptism of jesus and follow the teaching of jesus till after resurrection so again they use the baptism of john there 
and the baptism of John there was used both as an act and as a teaching as qualification for somebody that will replace Judas among the apostles look at me everybody what was the mission of John the Baptist the mission of John the Baptist as a prophet was to point to Jesus both in his teaching so the entire teaching of John called the baptism of John was pointing to Jesus. The second mission of John, hear me clearly. The second assignment of John the Baptist was to baptize Jesus. John the Baptist was not asked to baptize everybody. His mission was to baptize Jesus because there was a prophecy that on him on whom the spirit will descend like a dove that shall be the son of god so to confirm that prophecy john was assigned to baptize jesus that is why for the fulfillment of that prophecy on that day when jesus was baptized a bird came on him like a dove to fulfill the prophecy and when that was done john's ministry finished that was the end of his ministry he has finished his ministry well, are you not aware that's where john finished his ministry oh yes he finished his ministry completely how do we know he's finished his ministry the next thing he started doing was to be getting angry and talking and and, and making noise in political matters you know he left ministry and started becoming a political pastor just like there are some polit political pastors and you know what i'm talking about when a man of God leaves pulpit and begins to become a politician, something is wrong with him. Fundamentally. What are you talking about? Do we have enough time to study the Bible that will be running around with politicians? Politician is a calling. Pastoring is a calling. You don't combine two callings. You stay in one. Stay in the area where you're called. John the Baptist finished his ministry. Instead of him to carry handbag and be following Jesus as a bodyguard, he was still making noise, not knowing that his ministry has finished. He started talking about Herod and attacking Herod. Herod had it and got angry and started targeting John and used political might to corner John and brought a small girl and openly said anything you want to the half of my kingdom for dancing like this i will give you and part of the conspiracy was to chop off his head so they picked john and put him in prison because his ministry has finished now he has introduced jesus he has baptized jesus what else that was the mission of john he, as a prophet, he was to point to Jesus, not to replace Jesus. But John was trying to replace Jesus. So he had to be wiped out. That is why, look, that is why when he was in prison, they came and told John, you are in prison. Jesus whom you introduce is reigning everywhere. John said, ah, ah. So he's reigning and he does not remember me in prison. Jesus didn't come to introduce John. John came to introduce Jesus. Je John was looking for what he cannot get. He, he expected that Jesus should stop his ministry and come to prison and release him. That's not Jesus' mission. That's not the ministry of Jesus. Then John got angry. When Jesus was not forthcoming to release him from prison, he got angry. Then in his anger, he now told his disciples who were coming to prison with banana and oranges and pure water. As they came to visit him on one of those occasions, he said, go and ask Jesus. Is he the real one? john started doubting the ministry that he was called to introduce i'm teaching here go and ask jesus is he the real one or should we look for another uh -uh. they came and said jesus uh john in prison said we should come and ask you first that are you are you really jesus or should we look for another person because he can't understand how jesus will be here and he will still be in prison jesus said okay come since john is doubting me come blind eye open lame walk deaf hear he said, you see miracles? They say plenty of miracles. He said, go to John. Tell him what you see and what you hear. They came and said, John, ha, we went and saw the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the cripples walk. In the midst of that, the girl said, I want the head of John the Baptist in a plate. So the, 
Herod ordered for John to be beheaded. That's how they took John. Fear, chop off his head and give the small girl. That was the end of John. Because John had finished his ministry and if he wanted to stay here long, ago, long enough, he should have carried the briefcase of Jesus and be following Jesus as an usher. I'm teaching here. So what was the mission of, Paul, of John? To point to Jesus by his teaching and then by the baptism of Jesus which was the final assignment because in that baptism the dove will come on him the voice will come from heaven this is my beloved son hear him and that will be the end of John's ministry am I teaching here? so when you hear the baptism of John he's talking about the teaching of John what is the teaching of John? the Lamb of God that take it away if you're catching revelation shout I hear you Acts 18 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, talking of Apollos, and being fathomed in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expanded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now, having expounded to him, let's see the difference. In verse 28 of the same chapter. For he mightily convinced the Jews. He couldn't do this before. After the training. Now he mightily convinced the Jews. And that publicly showing by the scriptures. That Jesus was the Christ. He mightily convinced the Jews. So that word mightily convinced the Jews what does it mean so we know the difference the word mightily convinced is the the greek word for is very long ago the kata lego lego coma now this is how it is spelled d-i-k-a-t-e-l-e-g-c-h-o-m-a-i leg leg lekomai lekomai and dikate Dikate is a strong word in, in Greek. Very strong, dikate. So it is dikate lekomai. The meaning of lekomai is to give evidence. To give evidence. The meaning of dikate in Greek is to turn something up and down. To turn something up and down. It is used by lawyers. It was used for effective advocacy. Effective advocacy. You know what that means? When you confront an, an opponent and you tear his argument, you take his facts and tear it to pieces and then you remove his platform for argument and render him baseless. That's the cutter. After they have finished with Apollos, he was no more quoting scriptures like a broken pipe. He will engage Jewish people. Then when they are trying to defend the law of Moses, by scripture, he will tear their argument, pull off the rug, and render them defenseless. And then show to them that Jesus is the main guy. This is what Apollos was able to do after the training of Aquila and Priscilla. Somebody say, I hear you. Yeah. He now could give the finest details of redemption. He now could teach the believer his inheritance in Christ from the revelation of Paul. Remember, Paul kept saying, so that when you read, you may understand my knowledge thank God for Paul the Jews believe so much in the law of Moses so much and Aquila and Priscilla in conjunction with Paul were able to refute the argument of the Jews and they were able to train Apollos to do the same they were able to raise Apollos you know to, to be able to confront the Jewish people now take note in Acts chapter 11, there was an argument. The argument was that Peter went to the gospel to the Gentiles. The Jerusalem church couldn't take it. There was so much argument. And that argument was never resolved. 
in Acts chapter 15 when Paul came back to the Jerusalem church the argument was still there that the Jews and the Gentiles are not the same even after the Holy Ghost came on the Gentiles the Jewish people could not accept the Gentiles so in chapter 15 when the argument became too much Paul and, and the rest said to them I mean Peter and James said to them why put a greater yoke on these Gentiles a yoke that we or our fathers could not keep why are you forcing them to observe the law are you with me here so after the argument became too hot in order for them to arrive at somewhere james and peter said but tell the gentiles even though they are not supposed to keep the law tell them number one they must not eat meat sacrificed to idols number two on every synagogue day they must read the ten commandments and then number three tell them to abstain from fornication three conditions they were still trying to drag the gentiles into judaism and paul said well at least we have gone a long way in this thing we have achieved some grounds let's leave it for now so that argument never was resolved then now acts chapter 20 verse 32 paul now takes this thing to another level and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the sanctified so now Paul is bringing the church to another level a level where the church begins to see that there is an inheritance for me number two that God wants me to be built up so listen carefully it was Apostle Paul that brought the knowledge for spiritual growth into the new testament church peter and the rest they were happy to be where they are legalism and all of that it was paul that now said look beyond all these things we are talking there is a place for growing up and until you grow up there is an inheritance that you cannot take so paul said i commend you to god and to the word of his grace now what he means by that is not as if there is god different and word of his grace different in the original greek what he has there is i commend you to god which is the word of his grace i commend you to god which is so both god and the word of his grace is one god which is the word of his grace which is able to build you up the word of his grace is able to build you up you cannot grow spiritually without the word of his grace your christianity is restricted without the word of his grace and that word of his grace will bring you to a place of inheritance in the course of this one to two weeks of being together my prayer for you is that every one of you under the sound of my voice your eyes will be open to the details of who you are in christ your eyes will be open to the details of what you have in Christ. Your eyes will be open to the details of what you can do and what Christ can do through you. If your amen is louder, receive it by revelation. Lift your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus, by the revelation of the word of God, I will have an understanding of who I am, what I have, and what Christ can do through me. I am in him he is in me what is in him is in me what cannot be found in him cannot be found in me I am built up by the revelation of his word if you stand up and shout that amen you are blessed tonight amen as you begin to grow in the knowledge of the scriptures he said it will build you up as you grow in the knowledge of the scriptures he says it will give you an inheritance there is an inheritance and your name is on that inheritance yeah yeah there is an inheritance you are not here to just move anyhow you are in him hallelujah you are in him and i declare over you by the power of the holy spirit tonight everything that christ has made available to you will manifest 
as we go through the year all of god's plan all of god's purpose all of god's program and agenda for your life will begin to unfold in the mighty name of jesus lift your right hand father i decree that everyone in this house the hunger for growth the hunger for maturity the hunger to know to know to know the love of god which passeth understanding to know the depths of god to understand the plan the program the purpose lord i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice tonight the revelation of jesus that will establish your people and make them unmovable and unshakable i decree that tonight all of the sufficiency of christ the riches of his glory that is available in this house i command it to manifest in every life manifest in every family manifest in every destiny in the mighty name of jesus thank you my father and i decree by the power of the holy spirit whatever is not of god hanging around your life is rooted out rooted out i rebuke infirmity i rebuke disease and i command the devil to get his hands off your life you are blessed nobody can curse you in jesus mighty name and everybody says amen can i hear you shout very loud i am built up by grace and i possess my inheritance among the sanctified i didn't hear your amen like thunder give the lord a praise and a hand and shout